In this video, we're going to look at finding the arc length and the area of a sector on a circle. First, let's begin with the arc length. So say we're given the following circle. In the circle, we have, let me zoom in here for you, we have the angle set, which we're going to label with the Greek letter theta. We have the radius of the circle, and then the, from each end of the radius, we can connect it, we're going to be able to find that distance, and we're going to label it with S, and that's called the arc length. In order to find the length of that edge of the circle, we can use the following formula, which is S is equal to R times theta, our radius times our angle measure. But the trick here is the angle that we're going to use, it has to be in radian. So if we are given the angle and as, as a degree, we need to use our conversion from a degree to a radian by multiplying by pi over 180. So let's try some examples here. Let's find the length of the arc given the angle measure and the radius. We're going to give the answer in terms of pi, but we're also going to convert it into a decimal by rounding to the nearest tenth. So first example, we're given our radian, 5 pi over 6. We have the radius of 3 feet. So using our formula, S equals R times theta. Let's plug in what we know. We know that our radius is 3 feet. We also know that our radian, the angle, our theta, is 5 pi over 6. Go ahead and multiply and go straight across. So 3 times 5 will give us 15 pi over 6. But just like any other fraction, we need to make sure our fractions are in simplest form. 3 goes into 15, and it also goes into 6, so we can simplify this down to 5 pi over 2. Then what we can do from here is... You know, 5 pi over 2 doesn't really resonate with us as far as the distance. We can put that into our calculator using the pi button and convert it to a decimal. And it rounds to about 7.9 feet. So if we had a circle with a radius of 3 feet, given at that radian of 5 pi over 6, that length from the around the edge of the circle there would be about 7.9 feet. Okay, another example. Here's our radian measure again at pi over 4. We have a radius of 14.5 inches. Again, plug in what you know. Our radius is 14.5 times our radian of pi over 4, which will be 14.5 pi over 4. But usually we're not going to leave a decimal in fraction form. We can go through the conversion by typing into the calculator 14.5 divided by 4 and converting back to a fraction, which is in simplest form 29 pi over 8 inches. Typing that in using the pi button, converting to a decimal, that is about 11.4 inches. So there's two examples, one using a whole number for a radius and the other using a decimal for the radius. Let's look at a third example. See how our degree measure, our angle measure is as a degree? So the first thing we have to do is convert that degree measure to a radian. So we're going to take 330 times it by pi over 180, which would go down to 11 pi over 6. So now that we have it as a radian measure, we can use our arc length formula of s equals r times theta to figure out the length of the arc for that circle. So there's my 10.5 times the 11 pi over 6, or in other words, 115.5 pi over 6. Convert that back to a fraction, which is 231 pi over 12 millimeters, or what we could say then as a decimal is a 77 pi in simplest form, and then as a decimal, that's about 60.5 millimeters. All right, let's look at some applications of this then. So say our central angle, theta, in some circle, and we got a radius of six meters, and, and now we know what the arc of that circle is, could we find the measure of that central angle? So let's, let's see what we know here. We got our formula, S equals R times theta, plug in the numbers to their appropriate variables of what we know. So we know that arc length is 10. We have a radius of 6. The thing that we do not know is theta. So treating theta as if it was x in algebra, we're going to divide both sides by the 6. And 10 divided by 6 would simplify to 5 over 3. Now you have to be careful here because the formula that we're using here is assuming that our degree measure, or not our degree measure, but our angle is a radian. So that 5 over 3 means radians. So we got our angle in radians. Let's convert 5 thirds into degrees using our conversion. So 5 thirds going from a radian to a degree, we multiply by 180 over pi. 
which is 900 over 3 pi. Again, we don't really know what that is as a decimal, but we can convert that back to a decimal degree, and that would be about 95.5 degrees. So it would take a central angle of 95.5 degrees to produce an arc length of 10 meters, given a radius of 6 meters. All right, moving along. Let's try another example. We've got a merry-go-round. It rotates at 2,808 degrees per ride. How far would a rider seated eight feet from the center of the merry-go-round travel during this ride? So 2,808 degrees means we're taking multiple trips around the circle here. And we've got our angle. We have our radius. Well, of course, our formula, again, to use it needs to be in radians. So we will take our 2,808 degrees, times it by pi over 180, giving us 2,808 pi over 180, or in simplest form, 78 pi over 5. So we have our theta, we have our radius. Let's use the arc length formula, plugging in what we know, the radius of 8 times our radian, giving us 624 pi over 5, or approximating that to the, the tenths, that would be about 392.1 feet. So if you were to put a GPS tracker at the very edge of this merry-go-round that has a radius of 8 feet and let it rotate for 2,808 degrees, it's going to add up to about 392.1 feet. Okay, a little bit more complicated application problem here. Cincinnati, Ohio and Atlanta, Georgia. The latitude for Cincinnati is 39.1 degrees north and Atlanta has a latitude of 33.7 degrees north. Assuming that the Earth's radius is 3,960 miles, how far apart are these two cities? So let's use a visual here. Here is a two-dimensional ver version of Earth. I'm looking at Earth from the side. Well, we've got our radius for the, e for the Earth of 3,960 miles. Let's look at the two cities that we have. Well, 33.7 degrees north is about this location. So that would represent where Atlanta is at. If we go up 39.1 degrees north, then we locate where Cincinnati is at. Hopefully you see that little difference between Cincinnati and Atlanta there. That's the length of the arc that we're trying to find on the Earth here. So to do this, we need to figure out what's the difference in our degrees here to do our theta. Well, we've got a bigger degree. Let's subtract out the degree from Atlanta giving us 5.4 degrees. But then, to use our formula for the arc length, it needs to be a radian, so we have to multiply that by pi over 180. Going through our conversion, it would simplify to 3 pi over 100. So now we have our radian measure. We have our radius of the Earth. Let's use our arc length formula. So 3,960 miles times our radian of 3 pi over 100. It would simplify in our calculator to about 373.2 miles apart. So Cincinnati and Atlanta are only 373.2 miles apart in distance using the arc of Earth. Okay, so that would be arc length. How do we find the area of a sector? That would be like the piece of pi that is made within the radius in that arc length. The formula that we'll use here is the area of the sector is equal to one half times your radius squared times the theta, and just like the arc length, theta must be a radian. So if you're given a degree measure, you must convert it to a radian first in order to use this formula. So moving along with some applications, let's find the area here. See that our degree measure that's given in this sector is 74 degrees, so we have to go through the conversion of to a degree to a radian, times it by pi over 180, giving us 37 pi over 90. Now that we have our radian measure and we have the given radius, we can go to our formula and plug in what we know. We have 1 half times 4 squared for our radius, and then times our theta. And then from there, we can pretty much type in what we have to our calculator to get our estimation. This is about 10.3 centimeters squared. So make sure that you include that unit in there because we had a radius of centimeters, and area is always squared. Okay, second example, another sector that we have here. This time we have it already given to us in radians and we have a radius of 23.6 meters. We can go ahead and plug everything into our formula here. So we have one half 
times our radius of 23.6 squared times the theta, the 19 pi over 12, which would simplify to roughly 1,385.2 meters squared. Okay, more applications. Say the area of a sector of a circle with a central angle of 240 degrees is already given to us, 134 feet squared. Could we find the radius of this circle? Well, degree measure, convert to a radian to get our theta, times about pi over 180. Simplifies to about 4 pi over 3. And reminding ourselves of the area formula for this sector, we got the A equals 1 half radius squared times theta. Plug in what you know. So this time we have the area, and we have our theta now. What we don't know is the R. But what we can do here is work backwards to find the R. And what's nice is that all of our terms on the right side here are together by multiplication. So we can take our 4 thirds pi and our 1 half and multiply those terms together, which is 4 pi over 6. And to get rid of the 4 pi over 6, we can multiply both sides by its reciprocal. So its reciprocal then would be 6 over 4 pi. So in this case, these would cancel out. On the left side, we're going to round this decimal. Not quite exactly, but it's about 64. And then to get rid of the second power, we're going to square root. And the square root of 64 is 8. What's our unit here? Well, looking back at our area, it was in feet squared. So that means the radius here would be 8 feet. Okay, so we can also use our formula to work back to either find the radius or we could do examples to figure out what the angle is that goes with it. Okay, the last uh, application problem that we're going to look here is windshield wiper arm. We've got a arm is 32 inches long, so what I have in green there, that represents the windshield wiper. And if the wiper sweeps through at an angle of 125 degrees, could we find the area swept by the blade. So what we're trying to do is figure out what's the area of this piece swept. Well, to do this, again, we have an angle measure. That 125 degrees, we're going to convert to a radian, which is 25 pi over 36. That represents the angle that we'd have down here. See that labeled. Next. Since we're trying to find that area of that little piece of a sector, we need to think of this type of problem here. Let's take a big sector, let's subtract out the area of a small sector, and that would give us the area of that little strip that we have made there. So why do I say big sector? Well, if we were to use our radius of 32 that we have here from the wiper, that radius or that sector area is really going to be represented by here. So it's a little bit longer or larger than what we need. So let's figure out what that area is. We've got our 32 inches for our radius. We have our radian measure, 25 pi over 36. And going with that multiplication, this would give us about 1,117 inches squared. So like I said, that, that area is a little bit too big. We need to subtract out something. That's something that we need to subtract out would be the little sector that's made here, which means we need a new radius value. Noticing that the wiper blade is 32 inches and that the length of this piece of our area that we're trying to find is 21, we could subtract those two distances apart in order to find that area of the small sector. 32 minus 21 is 11. So the radius that we'll use for this sector is going to be 11 inches, but you should notice then by the illustration here that the theta is not going to change. So let's plug in what we know. We have our formula, 1 half 11 squared times 25 pi over 36. Type that into the calculator. The area of the small sector would be 132 inches squared. And like I said previously, we need to take big sector minus small sector to find the area of the swept space. So big sector, take away the small sector, leaves a remaining value of 985. So that would be 985 inches squared would be the area of this strip that the windshield wiper blade covers.